Welcome to this intro training session on the Garmin Apollo GPS, hosted by yours truly, Major Updraft. In this video, we will be discussing downloading and setting up the Apollo GPS simulator. I'll assume you're using a PC Windows-based computer. The simulator has some problems on my Windows XP and crashes occasionally. Sometimes a warning box will indicate a crash and you can continue using the simulator without effect. In this case, I'm using a Windows 7 operating system without any software problems. If you have not already downloaded the software, bring up a Google page and type in Garmin GX55 Simulator. The first entry should be GX Series Simulators. You want to download the Deluxe Edition. Once downloaded, install on your computer as you would any other software and open the simulator. The simulator window opens with the unit powered off. Before powering the unit on, check the basic settings. Be sure the model reflects the GPS in your aircraft. In this case, we'll be using the GX55. And make sure the options include the SAR setting with the checkbox. If it's not, check the box before moving on. Now we're ready to power on the unit. We'll move the cursor over the on off switch and click the left mouse button. The unit will start going through its initiation stage. We can skip the tests by clicking the soft key skip. Next, the unit will give us the expiry date of the database. Flying with an expired database is certainly not recommended, but for simulation purposes, it will certainly suffice. We will see all three components of the GPS, the enunciator, the CDI, and the GPS itself, all flashing with a message. In order to find that message, we will hit the soft key where it says MSG. The message here is simple, but it has stopped our flashing lights. However, the message light will stay illuminated as long as the message is pertinent. Clicking the message button a second time will remove and extinguish the message. We can receive that message again by clicking the message button again and toggle back and forth. Now, one additional check to make in our setup before we move on to basic operations is we must assure the SAR map is turned on and the database is set to our area of operation. To accomplish this, we'll hit the map button. Next, we need to move the outer and inner knobs. It's important in using these that you understand the tip of the cursor must be on the part of the knob you're trying to move. So in this case, my tip is on the outer knob. One click with the left mouse button brings me to the map setup page. However, this is not the page that has the information we want. So I will move my cursor to the small inner knob. Anywhere on this knob, I can click my left mouse button to turn the knob one click to the left. This is the setup page we are speaking about. We can see the SAR map is already on. Our grid type is US, but our position is set to Seattle, and we prefer Atlanta for our operation. To make this change, we'll hit the Select button. That will highlight the first field in the list. Let's move our outer knob to the right. Two clicks. And we can now change what is in this field with the inner knob. We'll come back to the inner knob, click with the left mouse button until we come back and find Atlanta. If we overshoot, we'll use the right mouse click to come back to the right. These setting changes should remain set on future uses of your simulator, but best to always check rather than be frustrated by a simulator that is not functioning as you wish. In the aircraft, the settings should remain the same as set on the previous flight. This concludes the intro video. In the next video, we will be discussing the basic operation of the GPS. I encourage you to subscribe to the Major Updraft YouTube channel in order to catch future training videos. Thanks for watching, and remember, knowledge and proficiency promotes safe flying.